This video explains Raoult's law and how we can use that law to rate the chemical potential for uh, an ideal solution. Okay, uh, until now we have learned how to calculate the chemical potential for a gas. And the expression is like this. The chemical potential of a gas is equal to the chemical potential at uh, the standard pressure, one bar, plus a correction from the fact that you might not be at that one bar of pressure. Now the idea is that we want to uh, rewrite that expression, but now for uh, the solution phase. And then what we've said is that under situations of uh, equilibrium, then the chemical potential of uh, a gas and a liquid when they're at equilibrium should be exactly identical, okay, as we proved using this uh, little idea right here. Okay, so that allows us to then uh, rewrite the chemical potential of the liquid as equal to the chemical potential of the gas that has that, has that expression. Our problem with this expression is that we have the chemical potential of the liquid depending on a measure of the concentration of the gas, and that is awkward. That's something that we don't want to do. Instead, we'd like to rewrite this uh, as, as depending on a measure of concentration of uh, the solution phase. Okay, so let's see how we do that. Uh, this is actually going to be uh, made available by something that we call Raoult's Law. Okay, so what is Raoult's Law? Raoult was a scientist that uh, uh, tried to uh, do the following measurements. Okay, so he had a solution of A, uh, and this could be water, or ethanol, or toluene, or benzene, and a liquid that has a measurable vapor pressure. Okay, and at some conditions of uh, uh, temperature, you have that there will be a partial pressure, which is what we call the vapor pressure, uh, at equilibrium. But then what Raoul did is add um, uh, another component, B. And uh, this could be a different uh, substance. For example, if it was water, then you can add ethanol. Or if it's benzene, you can add toluene. And then the question is, well, how does the presence of this B in the solution affect the vapor pressure of A on top of the solution? Okay. So uh, the way that Raoul described the results were, uh, was by using graphs like this, where we measure the vapor pressure on top of the solution as a function of the mole fraction of A in the solution. Okay, so this is a measure of concentration of A in the solution phase. Okay, these graphs go from zero to one. Okay, and this is when you don't have when you don't have any A. That's when you have only A. Okay, so this point is actually quite easy to measure. When you only have uh, pure A, then the vapor pressure of that uh, uh, solution is going to be the vapor pressure of A when pure, and that's a number that we can uh, that we know. Okay, uh, we can call that the vapor pressure of A when pure. And that's what that asterisk means, that means that A is pure. Okay, at the same time, we also know what happens at this other side of the di diagram. When you don't have any A at all, then the vapor pressure is going to be zero. Okay, the question though is what happens in between when you have that maybe there's 90% of A and 10% of B or 80, 20 and so forth. Well, Raoul's law, or what Raoul, Raoul found, is that there's a linear dependence of the vapor pressure on the concentration. Okay, and the way to write that is to say that the vapor pressure on top of the liquid is equal to the mole fraction in the liquid times the vapor pressure of the liquid when pure. Okay, there's a linear dependence between the vapor pressure on top of the liquid and the mole fraction in the liquid. Okay, this is very important. Now this is the liquid phase. Okay? And that is going to be important because notice that that is going to be, allow us very conveniently to go back to this expression and now take that vapor pressure or partial pressure that we have right here and replace it by something that depends on a measure of concentration in the solution, which is what we wanted to do. Okay? But before we do that, uh, we can then examine what happens to the other component in this mixture. Notice that again we start with A, uh, pure A, and then we add a little bit of B. But we can continue to do this and repeat the experiment so that uh, we run the experiment backwards. Okay, so uh, we could do exactly the same for the, the same thing for the other component. Okay, notice that uh, if there's only A, then B should be uh, the, the mole fraction of B should be zero. If there's no A, then you should only have B. The mole fraction should be one. And in in the middle, you're going to have something like 50-50 or 40 of A, 60 of B, and so forth. Okay, so how would this uh, diagram look like for B? Well, again, we know that if there's no B, then the vapor pressure in B should be zero. And if there's only B, 
then the vapor pressure B should be the vapor pressure when pure. In, in this case, I'm choosing to draw uh, the uh, vapor pressure of B when pure uh, to, to make that a larger vapor pressure than with A, and that would mean that B is more volatile than A is. And again, that's because again I'm choosing to uh, write uh, the vapor pressure of B when pure larger than the vapor pressure of A when pure. Okay, in the middle, uh, Raoult's law is going to tell us that that should be a straight line. Okay, and again for component B, you're all going to have exactly the same law, P of B when pure. Okay, so uh, this is a vapor pressure versus composition diagram that happens when you uh, have that the both components of this mixture satisfy Raoult's law. Okay, so again, uh, what we're actually going to do now is, is then use this law to try to see how uh, we can rewrite the chemical potential for the solution phase. Okay, so uh, I'm going to erase this and then this and see how this would translate into that. Okay, so we can do this for component A or B or actually it doesn't matter which one you choose. We can use a generic component like J. Okay. And J. And that means that the chemical potential of J in the liquid is going to be equal to the chemical potential of J uh, in the gas phase, which is just that expression. Mu of J at the standard pressure in the gas phase plus RT natural log of P in this case is of J over one bar. All right, so uh, again now Raoult's law allows us to uh, reformulate that in terms of a measure of the concentration uh, of the solution. Mu J gas plus RT natural log of using Raoult's law that is going to be X of J P of J when pure over one bar. Okay, we're going to split this uh, natural log into two terms. The mu sub j in the liquid is going to be mu sub j uh, of the gas at one bar plus RT natural log of P of j when pure over one bar plus RT natural log of X of j. Okay, and then uh, try to see if um, uh, we can make some progress with this. Okay, notice that uh, this expression looks the same as that one, okay, but uh, uh, now you actually have to figure out what this term is. Looks like this term should be a constant, because that's just the chemical potential uh, of the gas at one bar, that's a constant number, and then this is the vapor pressure of the liquid. When pure, it's a constant number, everything seems to be a constant number. The question is intuitively, what does this mean? How can we actually uh, uh, reformulate this in an easy way? The way to do that is by making uh, x of j equal to 1. Okay? If the mole fraction of uh, a j happens to be 1, that means that you only have j. And then what you're calculating here would be the chemical potential of j when pure. Okay? When x of j is equal to 1, then the chemical potential of j is equal to the chemical potential of j when pure in the liquid phase. Okay, so then we can uh, try to do that uh, uh, transformation. We have that mu j uh, L when pure is going to be equal to this term, mu of j of the gas reference plus RT natural log of P j star one bar. And then we'll have to add this term. But if we make the mole fraction of j one, then the natural log is going to be zero and that term uh, entirely disappears, okay? So we actually now, now know what this term is. Notice that this term is essentially, or is exactly, the chemical potential of J when pure. Okay, so to finish this expression, we can write that the chemical potential of J uh, in the liquid phase is going to be equal to this term, which is, we have demonstrated that is the chemical potential of that component when the liquid is pure, plus, this correction. Okay. That is the chemical potential of uh, a component in a liquid mixture when it satisfies Raoult's law. Okay, so uh, does this make sense? Uh, okay, notice that the mole fractions are all going to be numbers between 0 and 1. Okay, so that x sub j is going to be between 0 and 1, which means that this correction is always going to be negative when written like that. Okay, so uh, here you have what this means. The chemical potential of a component in a solution is going to be the chemical potential of that component if it was pure 
plus a correction which will be negative from the fact that you're not going to be pure when you're mixed with something else. Okay, so again, this number is always going to be smaller than that, and that is because the chemical potential of uh, substance in solution decreases when you mix it with something else, which makes perfect sense, right? The chemical punch should go down if uh, the concentration of that substance in the solution goes down. Okay, so uh, this finishes at the, at the script, our uh, discussion of how you can write the chemical potential uh, for a component in a solution phase when uh, that substance satisfies Raoult's law.